Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. A lot of you have been asking for an update on my 2015 Mustang GT project car. Well, like a lot of you here in Pennsylvania, we're currently covered with ice and snow, which means I haven't been driving the car very much, but it's going to be plenty of time to stare at in the garage and envision what I want to do next. Ever since I got the car, my main goal has been something along the lines of an ultimate street car. I want a car that looks great, handles great, has excellent street manners, and best of all, I want horsepower. So far, as far as horsepower goes, I've added a Ford Racing exhaust system and a custom tune. While these basic bolt-ons definitely made a difference, they're not going to get me to my horsepower goal, which is six to 700 horsepower. To do that is going to require a power adder. I've been doing a lot of research of what I wanted to do, decided to go with a Ford Racing Roush Phase 1 Supercharger Kit. It wouldn't be a CJ Pony Parts video if we didn't show you how to install it, so today we're going to show you how to do that using my 2015 Mustang GT. Ford Racing teamed up with Roush to offer the supercharger kit for your 2015 Mustang GT with manual transmission that will take you from 435 horsepower all the way up to 627. The heart of the kit is the R2300 TVS blower. TVS stands for Twin Vortex Series, which is a positive displacement root style blower, which gives me excellent low end torque and horsepower and also plenty of room to grow in the future. The supercharger kit replaces the intake manifold with obviously the supercharger, this lower section here, which is an inner cooler. The inner cooler, again, makes it great for a street car because it can keep your inlet temperatures down. Because of the great relationship between Roush and Ford Racing, the install on this kit is almost OEM quality. Everything looks and feels like genuine Ford parts, and everything necessary is included for the insulation, including the cold air kit, new coolant bottle, heat exchanger, new fuel injectors, new spark plugs, a new throttle body, and every piece of hardware necessary for installation on your 2015 Mustang GT. The installation for the Roush Supercharger is going to be quite involved. Roush suggests about 10 hours for installation. I would expect to take every bit about that because, like I said, there is a lot to do for this installation. The first step I would do is print out the instructions. Roush does not include instructions but has them on their website as a PDF file. You can download and print it out. Obviously, you can go off your laptop if you want. For me, this is a lot easier. The first step of the installation is going to be disassembly. The first thing you're going to want to do before anything else, though, is remove your computer. The computer has to be reflashed with a Roush tune to work properly with the supercharger. If you have a local dealer you work with or somebody with a proper flash tuner, you can do this yourself. If not, you'll have to send it out to Roush, and they do charge you $100 to put the tune in your car, which is definitely very reasonable. The next step is going to be basically disassembly, and then modifications, and then finally installation of the supercharger kit. We're not going to do our standard tool list for this installation because of how many tools are actually involved with it. We suggest watching the video in its entirety to get an idea of what you're going to need to complete this installation at home. The install begins oddly enough in the back seat of the car. The very first thing we're going to do is disconnect the fuel pump module so we can get fuel pressure out of the system. The module is located behind the driver's side underneath the back seat cushion. The drive module is located right here. Push down the top plug and disconnect it. Once you have the module disconnected to get the fuel pressure out of the system, simply start the car and let it run until it stalls out and shuts off. Crank it a few more times to make sure the pressure is released, then we can move under the hood. Should stall out pretty quickly. Okay, we should be good to go. Now we can begin disassembly under the hood. Before you get too far, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. One, it's not a bad idea to ask for some help. The supercharger assembly is quite heavy. Lifting down the engine, help will definitely make it easier. The second, get yourself some good quality fender covers. We have a huge selection here of CJ's, these gripper covers. They do a great job of sticking to the fender so they don't slide around. They also protect your paint. Now we can disconnect our battery. The computer's located here on the passenger side underneath your fuse box. To get to it, these little plastic connectors in the fuse box, simply push these in and it'll lift this kind of up out of the way. Disconnect the main harnesses by pushing these gray connectors back. Then remove the two bolts holding it to the bracket.
Once you have the computer out, you want to fill out the Roush warranty card, grab the voucher, put your name and the VIN on the computer itself, and ship it out to Roush. If you mail it to them overnight, they'll actually overnight it back to you, so the whole process should only take two to three days. We're going to remove the eight push pins, then remove our radiator cover. Now you want to get the car off the ground or remove the wheels. First we're doing with the car off the ground is remove the splash shields. There's between 10 to 12 roughly plastic clips. Remove all the clips from the inside here, and then you can pull off the splash shield. Now we can remove the splash shield. Gotta push the edge in and then sort of fold it in half. Once the splash shields are off, the lower closeout panel is going to come off next. Tell them by two of the push pins here and a whole bunch of 7mm bolts. Once the cover's off, we can work on draining the cooling system. Start with the degas bottle. Pickcock is located on the passenger side right here. If you notice there's a little drain below it, grab some 3 8 hose, put that up over the drain, and you want to put that down into a clean bucket of some sort. In most cases, the cool of these cars is still going to be pretty new. There's no reason you can't reuse it as long as you put it into a clean container. While the cool is draining, we're going to remove the strut brace next. The strut brace actually will not be reused with the supercharger. We can pop the engine cover off. Another part, obviously, that will not be reused. Even though we're still in the disassembly phase, later we do have to cut the K-brace. So right now you do want to mark it. What you're going to do is use the wiper cowl to draw your line. You go from that corner, follow this over, and that's where we'll cut later. To get the K-brace out, we have to remove the hardware underneath the wiper cowl. So we're going to remove these push pins located here to lift that up and disconnect. Now we can remove the hardware to remove the K-brace. Now we can remove the factory cold air kit that we're not going to obviously use with our supercharger. We'll start with these three fittings here, and then remove this clamp for the factory air tube. Easy, simply push in and disconnect. Now pull the red slide out underneath, disconnect the mass air meter plug. Don't forget the little plastic clip on the air box itself. The air box is held to the inner fender by this bolt right here. Last step for the air box, we're going to disconnect at the throttle body. Now the whole air box is mounted as one assembly. To remove the rest of the sound symposer tube is actually a little bit tricky. There's a 10 millimeter nut on the firewall. You kind of have to reach in from the front of the engine from underneath and get a small wrench in there and you can remove it. 
Once the nut's off, we can remove this imposer. This little plastic clip here. Let's pop that off. There's another one back here. We're gonna move our JLT oil separator from passenger side. We pull the gray tabs. We pop that off. Driver's side PCV, same way. Just turn it till you see the gray clip. Pull that off as well. Now we're going to start making some disconnections over towards the throttle body area. We'll start with the brake aspirator. Let's push in here. We're going to separate those two parts there. Now the throttle body. Pull that red tab out. Connect that and push it aside. Then the harness from the canister purge up here. Pop that plug aside. Make sure you keep the harness up on top. We obviously will need it later. And then the connector here, this green connector. Pop this little green connector back with a screwdriver. Like remove the whole tube. So remove this here. And pop it off the cam cover. Disconnect here, and finally disconnect with the booster. It's the same kind of green connector to throttle body. Now we'll disconnect the fuel hose from the factory fuel rails. I'm gonna grab a rag of some sort, because even though we did purge the fuel system earlier, you still will probably get a little splash of fuel left in here. So push up on the blue tabs, squeeze them together. And disconnect. Once the fuel line is disconnected, we're going to move one of the brake booster hose. It connects here to your throttle body. So release this clamp here. These two nuts hold up the intake manifold. And finally, this clamp back here at the booster. Once the hose is off, you also want to remove the check valve. Next, the heater hoses and the fuel rail covers themselves are going to come off. Once the covers are off, remove the heater hoses. Simply squeeze these two white clips together and lift straight up. Now disconnect from the firewall and remove both hoses. And remove the hoses from the degas bottle to the engine. Now back to the engine side, we're going to start removing the injectors by removing the four bolts that hold the fuel rails down. Disconnect each injector, pushing on a little plug and popping the harness off. Before we can work on the manifold, want we'll to make sure you just pull this line off this retainer here, or it'll get stuck when you pull the manifold off. You can take manifold that's held to the engine by three bolts per side. Remember, they actually will not come off, just get them all the way out. The intake manifold is now ready to come out. This is one of those parts where having an extra set of hands will make your life a lot easier. Once you get the intake out, the 15 has a charge motion plate. You have to actually get all four plugs for the plate, 
the two push pins and the harness all disconnected behind the intake manifold kind of as you're lifting it out. So like I said, an extra set of hands will definitely make this part easier. Yeah, it up. With the intake off, I can give you a better idea of where your connections are going to be. There's two plugs here. Both have the slide down red retainers, then you squeeze to pop them off. Then two plugs up here. These you're just going to squeeze to remove. In this harness here, you can either cut it like we did to make it easier, or if you have a tool, you can get in there and just pop that plastic piece off to remove it. I'm going to put some tape over the intake port just to protect and make sure nothing goes down in there while we're working on the engine. Now we're gonna move our degas bottle. Start by removing the clamp for the vent, then the clamp at the engine. Once the degas bottle is out of the way, we're gonna remove the upper radiator hose. There will still be some cooling in here, so you wanna grab a rag, move the clamp here, and push down on the spring or move it on this side. We're going to release pressure on the tension now and remove our belt. Electric fan is going to come out next. Start by disconnecting the harness over here. There's one bolt on each side holding it on. I'll remove the water pump bolts. And remove the pulley. Since we're not going to be reusing it, we can simply cut and remove the belt for the AC compressor. We're going to unclip the passenger side wiring harness from the engine here and just push it aside. Now we're going to disconnect the coolant hose here that goes down to our thermostat, unbolt the thermostat from the engine and kind of push it aside. We're going to remove the water pump itself. It's going to be some cooling coming out of that part. I'm going to stick some clean towels into the cavity for the water pump. What you want to do now is pretty much cap off anything that's open. Uh, the thermostat, the heater hose opening here, thermostat. The radiator, the heater hoses at the heater cord, the firewall, just cap off everywhere you don't want something to get that doesn't belong there. Once everything is capped off, that actually finishes our disassembly stage. We're done taking apart and we're going to modify some of the factory components before we begin the installation. The first thing we're going to modify is the brake booster aspirator hose assembly. What we're going to do is grab that assembly as well as the check valve we removed. First thing we're going to do is separate this end hose here from the metal by releasing this clamp. Now we're gonna grab the hardware kit for fitting that we need. The instructions are gonna say hardware kit A, D, G, H. The letter is actually right there. So it's 1315 TVS hardware kit D is what that stands for. We're gonna use the half H to three eighth reducer here Put that into the end of the hose that we just removed that has the double clamp on it. So the 
bring it back to the end and connect. Now we're gonna go to the other end of this hose and we're gonna cut one inch off the end. Now we'll go back to the other assembly here. Carefully remove this foam sleeve, sort of roll it back with your fingers. Once that's off, we're gonna remove the split loom here as well. Put that aside. And we're gonna release this clamp. Remove a split loom from this curved tube here next. And then we're going to cut that off. Now we're going to go back to hardware D, grab this rubber plug, and put it over where we just cut. Now we're gonna go to this larger curved hose here. Start by removing the split loom. And what we're gonna do is loosen this clamp and take the hose and basically flip it over 180 degrees. Now the hose we just flipped over here, you're gonna follow the bend till it gets straight. Then we're gonna go up two inches and then we're gonna cut this off. Once we cut this hose off, you don't wanna remove the clamp. We're gonna modify this and use it again. I'm gonna cut the clamp down. If you're left with a sharp edge, you wanna file it down and make sure it doesn't cut the hose. Once cut, you wanna reinstall it. leave it right on the end. Then we're going to move on to this hose. Again, we're going to take two inches off the end. Now you grab the check valve removed earlier, put it in the hose that we just cut, and then slide the clamp up and over. Now on the other side of the hose of the plastic fitting, right where the bend is here, you're three quarters of an inch down, and then we're going to cut that. We're finished modifying this line. We're gonna reinstall the sleeve we removed earlier. Trust me, it'll still be plenty sticky. There you go, and there's our finished line ready to be installed. Now you're gonna grab the canister purge line that has the green fittings on both ends. We actually don't need anything from the line but the fittings. So what we want to do is slide down the split loom on both pieces and then carefully remove these. Now you're gonna grab the 36 inch 3 8 rubber hose included with the kit and the sleeve from Hardware Kit D. Wrap the sleeve around the hose. Now we'll pull out the sleeve, grab some of the supplied clamps, again from Hardware Kit D. Put that over. Install the fittings we just removed from the factory hose. Do the same on the other side. The next modification is gonna be for the K-brace. Remember earlier where we marked it on the wiper cowl? Now we're gonna cut that off. This metal is pretty thick. Cutting wheel is probably gonna be your best bet. You wanna put it in a vise and hold on to it and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Like I said, a cutting wheel or sawzall will work. If you have access to a plasma cutter like we do, it's definitely the easiest way to do it. I'll throw a little bit of paint over the edge where we just cut to protect it. We have to make some modifications to the factory fan shroud to mount the new degas bottle for the cooler kit. What you want to do, take the supplied template. This lines up with the back edge here. And this part over here fits into the curve. So 
get it kind of where it goes. One hole here. One here. And then we're gonna mark the corner of these rectangles. I'm gonna grab my marker. Just mark the holes, make them a little easier to see when cutting. What we're gonna do is drill these two holes out here. Then we're gonna drill a center hole for each of the squares and use a dremel to open them up. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the new coolant bottle. It's a little tab that goes in the opening there. Make sure it fits flush, all the holes line up. We can put it aside for now. Now we're at the part of the installation that's honestly going to be a little bit scary. What you have to do is you have to grind down the timing cover and also grind down the intake valley to make sure everything clears properly. We're going to get closer and I'm going to show you exactly where you need to cut and how much material to take off. What you're going to do is you're going to start with this one here. You're going to grind this off and grind it down so it's even on the height of these ribs right here. And you're going to move up to this one here, do the exact same thing, grind it flat, equal with these ribs. This one here is a little trickier. What you're gonna do, pretty much draw a line following the shape of the timing cover. I'm gonna cut this in half and then kind of cut a chunk of it out. Roughly 20 millimeters is the piece you're gonna cut out there. The last modification is gonna be inside the intake valley. The last one is this boss here in the intake valley. What we're gonna do here, basically cut it in half, add an angle downward and smooth it out so the intercooler clears. Before you get started, what you want to do is cover as much as possible. When you're grinding aluminum like this, it's going to make a mess. It's going to get everywhere. Make sure the engine's covered, any holes that lead into the engine is covered before you start grinding. Once we got it done, we're going to measure it. 19.98 millimeters is perfect. Now we're gonna do the boss and the intake valley. We're gonna put the intercooler on to test fit just to make sure we grinded that boss down. We had enough clearance. We're a little bit tight, so we're gonna take a little bit extra off. Now that the grinding is all finished, we're gonna start working on the wiring to install our supercharger. The first harness we gotta modify is this one here, which attached to the throttle by, which is your TPS. We start by moving this insert here to get to the pins themselves. So we get it in this corner here, just flip it outward. Now we have to remove actually each of the individual pins. We're going to move them over to a new plug and harness for the supercharger. To do this, they do make a deep pinning tool which will make your life easy. If not, a tiny screwdriver like a glass for your glasses, a jeweler screwdriver, or something like a paper clip. Basically, you go in on top of the wire, and the very back is a little plastic clip. A little bit of work. You want to get underneath that clip and lift it up, and you can pull the wire out from the back. Here you can see the original TPS plug in the new one. The center section is pretty much the same, and the wire is going to transfer over. The reason we're changing this is because we're moving the throttle body, so we need to extend it. By switching to this plug, it makes it a plug and play extension. Same as before, use a small pick at the edge here, and pop the center clip out. If you look at the back of the new plug, you'll see the pin positions are marked one through six. The instructions are very clear on which color goes into which pin position. The wire only fits in one way, so if it goes in, if it's tight, just flip it over until you get in the right direction. It'll pop into place. Make sure all the wires are snug, and we'll reinstall the cap. Now we're going to plug the extension harness into the harness we just made. Make sure it clicks into place. And you're just going to fish it back with this main harness, and you're going to zip tie it in place. 
Next, we're gonna modify the purge valve wiring harness. Same process, pop off the centerpiece and depin. I'll grab the new empty plug that's included with the wiring. Carefully pop off this white insert. Now we'll hit the wires we just removed and install them in this plug. Again, you've got pin position one and pin position two. The instructions tell you which wire goes where. Now we'll connect the new extension. Once it connect, double check your colors are the same, white and white, green with green. If you have them reversed, you put the pins in the wrong place on this plug here. Just like the other one, we're gonna fish it towards the back. And we're gonna zip tie it on. Now you'll grab these two sensors from your wiring harness kit. The one with the wire attached to it, it's gonna connect to your IMRC sensor wire that's plugged into your passenger side. This one is gonna go on the driver's side. Plug that in, just leave the wire laying over the cylinder head on this side. And this gets plugged into the other side, the driver's side. While we have the harness here, we're gonna remove this ground strap. Later in the installation, we do have to open this up for the new bracket, but for now, we're just gonna remove it and get it out of the way. Now we're gonna start wiring for the intercooler pump for our supercharger kit. The relay and the fuse here are gonna mount underneath your fuse box. This connector here is gonna be fished down by your water bottle for the actual intercooler pump itself. These two connectors are gonna go to the back of the engine on top of the transmission back where our CMCV wiring is. The power is gonna to go to our fuse box and the ground is gonna to go to a factory ground on the strut tower. Release the tabs here. Lift our fuse box up. This hole here is where the relay and the fuse are gonna mount. The kit includes hardware with a bolt proof for the front with a nut on the back. We're we'll just lay the power and ground over roughly where they're gonna go. And this is gonna follow the engine harness back. Now we're gonna take the harness that we fished back behind the engine and disconnect the radio capacitor found on the back of the driver's side cylinder head. Do is disconnect this plug. This is gonna kind of plug in line with it. <clears throat> now we'll open up the fuse box and work on the power and ground connections. Power, we're going to connect right here. The ground, we're going to use this outboard factory ground right here. The actual intercooler wire itself, make sure it's fished in front of our washer bottle. We're just going to tuck it down out of the way for now. Now we go down to the valley of the engine. We're going to modify the wiring harness here for our knock sensors. The easiest thing to do is to first disconnect them. Base of these have to be able to be out, spread out wider. So we're gonna start by removing the tape, getting these little L brackets out of the way. Now we're gonna cut the split loom carefully with the wire, cut down this area so we can pull them a little further apart. Now what you wanna do is either reuse the split loom or put tape over these once you have them wide enough. Now what we're gonna do is we'll plug them back in. Loosen them, push them all the way to the outside, pretty much as far as they'll go so they're touching. Now we're going to start the spark plug installation by popping off the coil covers. Pop these red tabs up, disconnect each of the coils. Now use an 8 millimeter socket to remove the coil themselves. 
Do these all at once, one at a time, really doesn't matter. Grab our spark plug socket. You will need an extension for this. It is pretty far down in there. Once you get it loose, you can actually just slide the coil back in. I don't need to grip the plug and remove it. The plugs come pre-gapped to 0.9 millimeters. You still want to check them though before you put them in. We're going to reinstall our coil. I'm going to repeat the process with the other seven plugs. Now we're finally at the best part, the actual installation. Before we get into it too far, we're going to do some sub-assemblies. There's a few parts we have to add to the existing pieces before they can be installed. We're going to start with the heat exchanger by installing the grommets that are included for mounting. Put the grommet down into the mounting bracket hole. I sort of have to work it in. Is it going to be a tight fit? Give it seated, grab one of the metal sleeves, and slide it down. Now you want to grab the included PCV hose in the supercharger kit. What we're going to do is remove the rubber hose from the plastic by removing this fitting right here. I'm going to release the clamp on the other side of the hose here, put it on the back of our intercooler assembly. You want to grab your stock intake and take the purge valve off. We're going to move that over to our supercharger. Then we're going to install the valve on the back of our supercharger. Work it into place. Grab the hardware provided in the kit. Do not reuse the factory. And we're going to connect the hose to the boost actuator over here. And we're going to grab the booster aspirator hose. This is actually one of the ones we modified earlier. This is going to go right on this fitting here, and then we'll tighten the clamp and still on it. Now we'll fit the supplied vacuum line to the bypass. It's actually the reference line will be connected later when it's on the car. Push that on there. And then if you haven't already, install the emblem on the supercharger. Now we're going to start prepping our fuel rail by installing our Ford Racing fuel injectors. I'm going to grab these clips here. Basically, if you look at the injector, you'll see there's two thin slots right there. What you do is you can take the clip, Pushing the slot till it locks in place. Make sure the plug is facing out. Lock it into place. Now the injectors are done, we're gonna move on to getting our air box ready. We're gonna grab the front duct here that goes out past your radiator and install that into the new air box. Pop in like that. The mass air meter is going to mount right here. You're going to grab the provided J clips, basically slide them over these openings. Now the meter goes through from the inside. Line it up with the holes and install the bolts. Now we're going to install the air filter to the mass air meter. Remove the mass air sensor from your factory housing. We're transferred over to our new Roush air box. 
sensor is going to install using the original screws. No reason to over tighten these, just get them snug. Make sure the meter's tight. Now we can move on to the lid. We're gonna steal a few more parts off our factory air box. We need this grommet with the sleeve, this grommet here, and this rubber insert on the bottom. Now we'll install these parts on our new air box. That just sort of sits there. We're finished the sub assemblies and time for actual installation of the supercharger kit. Fortunately, step one is probably the most boring part of the install. It's a sound elite tube plug off. It's kind of hard to see. You sort of have to sneak your hand down in there where the sound tube came off the firewall. You put this in place. We're going to remove the tape from our cylinder heads and prepare to install the intercooler. Make sure all the plugs and everything is out of the way, that the surface is nice and clean. I'll place the intercooler. Make sure not to get any wires trapped underneath it. There we go. Yeah. Make sure it sits properly. It's not sitting flush. You may not have ground everything down. You may have to pull it back out and check it. Everything is in place, and we know we're good to go. This is the ground wire we removed earlier. That has to actually be fished back to the front corner. The intake is going to be grounded there. So what I'm going to do first cut this tab off and then we're going to trim this harness, trim the cover back on this harness so we can move it further back. Then we're going to tighten this down just yet, but just get it started. I'll put the rest of these bolts in, get them started by hand. Now we're going to torque these down to an 8 to 12 Newton meters. So we need a quarter inch torque wrench to do this. A specific sequence. We're going to start with the middle ones. Then move to the front. and then the back. I'm going to plug in the ACT sensor. I'm going to zip tie that over here. I'm going to install the injectors. Put a little assembly lube on each of the injector overings to make them go on a little bit easier. So fuel rails are in place, reinstall the original hardware. And we're going to tighten back to front, starting with the driver's side. Now we'll plug in the injectors. Now the best part, put the supercharger in place. You line it up on the two dowels, and it'll sit nice and tight. I'll install the bolts. It's gonna be 10 total. We're gonna tighten these to 25 Newton meters and again, there's a specific pattern, starting in the middle, going back and forth, and working your way outward. Now 
Now the supercharger is tightened down, you can install the pulley. Put a dab of blue Loctite on each bolt. Now we're gonna hold the pulley and torque them between eight and 12 Newton meters. Now we're gonna connect the brake aspirator hose we modified earlier. This here is obviously gonna to go to the booster itself. This line here, connect to this one, is coming from the back of the supercharger, and then this one will go into our cold air intake. Now we're gonna get the plenum ready to go onto the car. There's two gaskets that have to be installed. The black gasket goes between the plenum and the supercharger. The orange gasket goes between the plenum and the throttle body. The plenum on the supercharger. I wanna make sure all the cables for our throttle body are clear. I'm gonna move over the fuel rail and connect that. And we can bolt on our throttle body. We'll plug in the connectors. I'll bring the purge line back over behind the supercharger. Plug that in over here. Now we're gonna fish the evaporative purge line down the factory plug and then fish it behind the supercharger and connect it over on the passenger side. We're gonna pull the rag now and reinstall our water pump. We're gonna install three of the bolts. This one here, we're gonna leave out for now. We're gonna start running the heater hoses now. We're gonna start though by removing this top bolt right here. One of the brackets that holds the heater hose is gonna go behind it. We're gonna bring this under the supercharger. We'll fish this back, connect to the lower port. Now we'll install the factory hose over on the passenger side. Now we'll connect the passenger side PCV hose. Now we're gonna move on to the front dress section. Before we do that, there's four bolts and one stud that have to be removed for our new bracketry. One, two, three, then down here next to the crank, four, five over there. Now we're gonna reconnect our thermostat housing. Now we're gonna install one of the Roush drive brackets. The rest of the brackets going to install using the Roush supplied hardware. We're gonna get everything snug first and then we'll torque them down. 
Please all get torqued to 25 newton meters. So we'll install the idlers on the bracket. Torque these at 25 as well. And we're going to grab the supplied belt. Just going to loosely put it roughly where it's going to go. I'm going to put the tensioner bracket down into place. I'll torque these down again, 25 newton meters. I'm going to put the belt on the supercharger. What you want to do first is pull all the slack towards the supercharger itself. Then make sure the belt seated on the crank, the presser, and everywhere else it's got to go properly. Once we let off the tensioner again, double check, make sure we're seated there, seated properly here. There, there, there. Okay, we're good. The belt's seated. Now we're going to reinstall the water pump pulley. Just get them snug. We'll actually torque them down with the belts reinstalled. Now we can reinstall the stock belt. Again, make sure your belt is seated everywhere it's supposed to be. The belt on, now we can torque the water pump bolts. Now we're going to start the heat exchanger installation by removing both outboard bolts for the factory radiator support. Now put the heat exchanger up into place. Let's get installed using the bolts we just removed. I'll install the provided J-clips on both ends of the front frame rails. A little bit of a tight fit, push them towards the center. We can mount the lower part of our heat exchanger. The top one's going to install with the nut and bolt that's provided. And the bottom screws into the J-clip we just installed. Now we're going to connect the outlet line from our heat exchanger up to our inner cooler. You move this rubber flap aside, sort of feed it through, and we're going to have to come back and trim it. I'm going to trim the rubber flap so it closes properly again. Once the hose is routed, secure the clamp on the intercooler side as well as on the heat exchanger. The bracket for the intercooler pump is going to mount right here on the bottom of the frame rail. What you want to do is put the bracket up and we're going to mark the holes and drill them out. Then we're going to assemble the intercooler pump bracket. Pump on there. With the bracket up in place and adjust if necessary to clear everything. It's kind of a tight fit. Now we're going to install the hose from the pump over to the inlet on this side of the heat exchanger. <clears throat>
We're gonna plug in the intercooler pump. And we'll tie up the harness out of the way. Now we'll continue work on the cooling system by reinstalling our electric fan. We saw the J-clips on the fan shroud. Now we can mount the degas bottle. We're going to mount the intercooler hose to the degas bottle before we install it. Now we'll connect the line from the degas bottle to the intercooler pump itself. And the final step, degas bottle to the intercooler. Now we'll reconnect the upper hose to the thermostat housing. We're going to reinstall the original degas bottle. We're going to put the air box in. Now we'll reinstall the factory bolt fender. And we'll disconnect the clips for the mass air sensor wire so it reaches over to the new sensor that in. Now we can install the intake tube. Connect the PCB line. And the line for the brake booster. And then the vacuum index line. And that concludes the actual installation of our Roush supercharger kit. Now we're going to reinstall the computer, the K brace, the splash shields, the underbelly pan, and then we're going to fill it with fluid. Before we put the computer in and start it up, don't forget to plug back in the fuel pump module. The computer goes in the same way it came out, just pull the fuse box aside. It kind of come from the front, get it down into place. Let's push the harnesses in and grab the gray tabs, lock them down. We turn on the key before we fire it up to make sure the intercooler pump system is working properly. You can hear the pump, you actually see the fluid working through here. We're gonna make sure the level is good, then we're gonna fire it up. You know the system's working properly when you can see corn coming back into the tank. Finally, the moment of truth, let's fire it up.
Without a doubt, the Ford Racing Roush Supercharger is our largest installation to date. While the install is not terribly difficult, it is going to be very time consuming, so definitely give yourself the better part of a weekend for the installation. Plus, give Roush a few days to get your computer back to you. Like I said before, unfortunately, there's a lot of snow and ice out here, so no test drives yet. But I guarantee in a future video, we'll give you some drives with this, some in-car video, as well as some dyno numbers to know what you're really looking to see. For the best selection of 2015 Mustang install videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out cjponyparts.com for the best selection of 2015 Mustang parts.